All right, guys, thank you for watching video number two of the Road to Developer series. And this video is going to be focused primarily on IDEs and text editors. But before I do that, I do want to acknowledge that you have chosen software probably over hardware. I think when you first decide that you want to get into technology, you have to decide whether you want to go more hardware focused, networking, uh, maybe syst administration, uh, that path versus let's just say programming for now, software engineering, software architecture, software development, uh, programmer in general. And so maybe you don't know much and this is kind of what it's targeted, uh, this video is targeted to you is that there are many things that that may mean and there are many languages, frameworks and tools that allow programmers to build software and a programmer is a person who writes computer programs and so when somebody says i'm coding they may be coding a number of different uh in a, a ton of different environments uh as far as on their actual computer um in different operating systems and which i'll make a video on that and they they may be using different languages and depending on what they're trying to program as far as a computer program that may change what what they're specifically using and so it can get a little confusing when you first come into this because you don't understand this industry and it's it's huge i mean this programming has been around for many years and it has developed really really over the last hundred years and so this is something that is uh, very exciting to enter into, but it is also very difficult. And depending on which area area you actually go into, uh, that may dictate what uh, I guess what types of challenges you may um, you may experience. As well as there are certain things that you may enjoy more in programming than other um, than other areas of programming. For example, you may really enjoy writing programs for machines like actual uh, controlling operation um, for a, you know a device or a robot or whatever you would like to say versus web development and writing code for building applications in the web or maybe mobile development you're really into writing programs to create mobile applications so this is just a the breadth of uh, really what software development and programming is before we jump right into the IDEs and text editors and so I wanted to mention that just because you may be really curious um, or you may not be and you may just be overwhelmed. And so I wanted to kind of just point that this is going to be focused for now on web development. However, uh, we might get into some videos doing some other stuff that is not web development. I definitely can see that happening, uh, coding some stuff with different devices like Arduinos or Raspberry Pis. I think those things are really cool and really interesting and we can definitely have some cool videos for that but that being said that's really what a programmer does in essence and so if you've chosen to be somebody who develops software or builds software um, that is the core of why you want to get into this industry is you want to build things and when you're primarily a user you just take it for granted right like we all just use our phone and make complaints and we you know <laughs> there is so much that we use in 2019 that is absolutely and incredibly worked on by engineers developers designers i mean it is there is so much and including money that goes into this so that you can use that web application that you find uh okay but it's free and and this is just the amazing aspect of development and programmers have this innate desire to build i think it's this desire to build fix problems and find ways to make something better that's ultimately what i think a good programmer has in their core is yeah they want to have fun yeah they like exposure to certain things but ultimately they want to build something and whether it's for their job and they're building maybe something they don't enjoy as much at the end of the day they come home and they want to build something on the side that they do enjoy and that that's how they express themselves through programming. So I know that's a pretty big rant to start. And so now we will dive into, well, if I want to code, what do I need? Well, pretty much, you know, a long, long time ago, we didn't have the, you know, the expressive 
um, text editors and IDEs that we have at our disposal now. And so I have a, a list here that I'm going to show and I'm going to bring them all up. And we are going to look at different editors for different environments. And so I don't want you to be overwhelmed by this because we're going to start with different ones. But I just want to mention some of the top uh, or best or optional or alternative editors. Uh, so Notepad, you can see, I'm just going to read what they are in just a little bit. But Notepad++ is a free um, source code editor for replacing like I guess replacement that supports several languages and it runs primarily on the Windows environment from Microsoft um, and it does have licensing. But this is just something that if you have Microsoft, you may use to write just a simple program. And when I say, um, you know, IDE, I want to make it clear when we talk about IDEs, what that acronym stands for is the Integrated Development Environment. And it's a software application that provides comprehensive facilities to computer programs for software development. So it's normally consists of like a source editor, uh, some automation build tools, fancy words there, and a debugger, which is for like fixing and finding bugs in your code and being able to, to work and reason about solutions to make your code work. So that's when I say, uh, when I mean, mean IDE versus a text editor may not have all those properties of an IDE, although some that um, people would consider text editors do have some characteristics of IDEs. So I'm not going to get too much into that in, right now when I cover all of these, but I will show some, so uh, record some clips. By the way, this is all live. Uh, record some clips that will hopefully show you a little bit of exposure to some of these um, to some of these and why they are so great to use and why you're going to be using these if you're writing code. So Notepad++ uh, from Microsoft. We have Brackets, which this one's a little bit older. It's just a modern open source text editor uh, that for web development design. Uh, it's, you know, it's pretty good. Brackets is great. When I first started, I think I, I went to a different text editor I didn't really like it as much, and so then I used brackets for a while, but very lightweight. And then we have Sublime Text, which it's cool because they kind of redid their branding. For those of you that remember the Sublime Text before, but Sublime Text is a you know sophisticated text editor for code markup and prose. There are people that are still using uh, Sublime Text, so there's nothing wrong with jumping in and learning in Sublime Text. I think it's very simple, and it'll help you kind of get into uh, coding as well from the beginning. It does have some pretty powerful features and you really can configure it to get to a place where you can perfectly code and do what you need to do, uh, but you're not gonna get a lot of the extra features and it is still very lightweight. This is actually personally what I spent a majority of my time starting to learn development with when I was on my own just messing around without any understanding of really what I was doing or where I was gonna go with development. This is Atom. So Atom is a text editor developed uh, and created by GitHub. You may have heard that term, GitHub, uh, or the company GitHub. And Atom was, it was kind of a revolution to text editors because it was just, the marketing from GitHub was just incredible as far as the art artistic nature of the marketing. You can even see here that they just express like all this customization um, and that it was cross-platform. And so you could download it and use it from for free from any uh, any operating system. And then it had, you know, a little bit more IDE um, aspects to it than maybe, you know, something like Sublime, um, but it was also very new. And so it was, I feel like a lot of people picked it up that were doing front end at the time and started to create plugins and use the package management system and you know express themselves with these various themes and colors that they really wanted to use uh, as far as uh, using a text editor. Visual Studio Code is by far one of the most popular uh, among web developers for editors. And Visual Studio Code is fantastic. Uh, sometimes it can bring a little bit of, um, a little bit of, I guess jank in some areas, but it seems to run buttery smooth in comparison to Sublime. And the amount of, I guess you could say, IntelliJ that it offers, uh, or IntelliSense, uh, sorry, is 
incredible. I mean, it has the standard stuff an ID would need, like a debugging, um, it, some really incredible debugging tools. It has built-in Git inside of it. It has an extension store, which people can create extensions and publish. And this is something that Microsoft created uh, for it to be cross-platform. And really what they did is they actually took what was called Electron, which is what was created by GitHub that was used at one point called the Atom Shell to actually create Atom. And so they took the technology that GitHub used to create Atom, to create a cross-platform uh, desktop text editor, and then they made their own text editor called Visual Studio Code. Now, why they called it Visual Studio Code I have no idea. It is the worst possible name for it, to be honest. Now people are more used to it. Some people will say VSC. I'll still say VSC and people have no idea what I'm talking about. But Visual Studio Code is a bad name because there is an editor from uh, f that is for .NET called Visual Studio. And so you can see that this is a little bit confusing because they one of them is for Android, iOS, Mac OS, and web and cloud stuff with .NET, and one is Visual Studio Code, which is open source and has a lot of different things that it's used for and people develop in. So this is something that was a little bit confusing from them, and you know ultimately, it didn't matter. This product has been incredible. Um, if you didn't know, Microsoft purchased GitHub recently, including ma making, you know, is, is making the right moves as of late. Despite how you feel about Microsoft, they have done a lot of things recently that have kind of indicated that they've changed the direction and flow of um, themselves as a company. And, you know, this product is open source, it's free, and it's cross operating system, uh, which is incredible. So anyways, you can download it um, pretty easily, just like anything else. And there are a bunch of powerful tools that we may, we'll get into because Visual Studio Code tends to be the editor that I go to use um, simply because what I do in front-end development and even some back-end development and even other languages is functional to be used in Visual Studio Code. Now, if you're dealing with IDEs, not just text editors, which this leans more towards an IDE than text editors of the past, then you're most likely going to be using a JetBrains product. JetBrains is like the company for creating IDEs. They have IDEs for Golang, uh, Java, PHP, PyCharm. It, people swear by PyCharm. Uh, it has stuff for Ruby, and it has for JavaScript, WebStorm. And these IDEs are so powerful. These IDEs are focused and created, and it's incredible. I mean, they, they have done an excellent job. I have messed around with JetBrains products, primarily PyCharm and WebStorm. However, the only thing about JetBrains is they are expensive to use. They are not free unless you have an EDU and you are, like I guess, in school uh, from what I have heard. And I'm not really sure how long that actually lasts. So I'm not sure if it's free at first, but I've seen, I think, some licensing up to $600 a year or something. So it can be pricey depending uh, if you're using it at work and you've been using it before from school and you're comfortable with it, then most companies will pay for that for you. So you don't have to pay for it if you aren't using, uh, you know, what you downloaded already. Uh, but yeah, IDE and Jet, uh, IDEs from JetBrains are incredible um, and you can trial them out too, which is very, uh, you know, very awesome of them that they'll let you trial the product so you don't end up spending a bunch of money and then regretting it. Uh, but yeah, so that's something that's used for IDEs quite often. Now, as far as the Java alternative to IntelliJ, Eclipse is another IDE for Java developers. I've heard mixed things about Eclipse. I've heard some people say that it's way smoother than uh, than IntelliJ in some aspects, but then breaks in other other aspects. So you'll see Java developers tend to use one or the other or both. Uh, and the opinions on that are not for me to say because I'm not primarily a Java developer. However, it is very noticeable that Eclipse is used. And, you know, as far as uh, Java development environments, 
Net beans is also one that, uh, you know, a lot of people like to just whip out net beans and use net beans. Uh, and so that's that's another, I guess you could say, um, IDE or more towards text editor for Java that's used as well. Actually, I think it's more towards an IDE uh, that people like to use as well, especially because I think that was out before Eclipse. Uh, don't quote me. We're also talking other languages here and IDEs that I haven't really used much. I have Eclipse installed uh, and I have opened it before it's, as well as NetBeans, but I'm not sure exactly what environments uh, they can work on as far as operating systems um, when it comes to some of those other ones. And then you have something like Xcode, which is everything you would need to create uh, both Swift supporting applications as well as mobile applications that would work on iOS, like uh, React Native applications. And so Xcode is something you have to install. Boy, does it take a while. But yes, Xcode, Xcode is kind of uh, a also an IDE, and you can work through there, supported specifically for Swift. Um, but it's also used for other environments. And then last but not least, Vim. Now, for some reason, whenever you know IDEs or text editors are mentioned, it seems like people seem to forget Vim. And I think it's because Vim is one of those things that's very like technically uh, challenging per se to developers who are new. And the main reason is that the running joke that everybody knows is that you accidentally enter into Vim in your terminal when you're learning to use the terminal and you can't get out. And so people Google, how do I get out of Vim? Um, and most people will just quit it and reopen it. But Vim is powerful. I'm actually going to link a video below of a guy who created a video in which he showed how fast he can do something in Vim, which saved him... And if I was doing that, possibly hours uh, that, you know, other IDEs uh, and IDEs or text editors simply don't offer. Vim is, and I'm going to read it here, it's highly configurable, which is something that makes it incredibly powerful because you can get very efficient in creating and changing any any uh, code. Um, and it's as it's included with v, VI, which that's what VM, VI, Vim actually comes from, as it comes from the original VI, is uh, you know, supported with most Unix systems. Um, and Apple, since Apple is essentially at its core Unix-based um, and comes from that line of um, operating system development, then you can use it on OS X as well. It's rock stable and it's continuously being developed to become even better. There are awesome plugins for it as well. It's very extensive. I'll read also here, it's multi-level undo tree, support for hundreds of programming languages and file formats. It's powerful for search and replace and it integrates with many tools. Now that being said, these things can be used in other environments. So for example, Visual Studio Code has a Vim uh, plugin. It's not Vim because you can't get everything that Vim alone will provide, but it will allow you to do some of the things like search and replace um, and get used to undoing certain things with your command keys or your, your I guess, custom keys that you can set up for shortcuts um, so that you can kind of have some of the similarity of Vim of insert and um, the insert and then there's another mode. Um, I personally have not used Vim much. I am starting to use it a little bit more and I started, I start, I guess I just started using it to get myself used to it um, by turning on the keyboard or turning on the plugin in VSC and forcing myself to kind of start learning how to navigate around um, and edit text, etc. So getting used to that is really not that difficult it's just time sync so it's a steeper learning curve but it's a learning curve that's absolutely worth it so that being said these are all of the editors um, my personal favorite is visual studio code but you can see down here i've got pycharm i even got code blocks for python uh, i have actually a mac vim there for python i have um, idle and i also have the python launcher um, and then I also have uh, Anaconda Navigator, which allows me to open up um, like some Juniper Juniper notebooks. Um, and then I have, I guess, like the main thing that I use for IDE is Visual Studio Code. I do still have, I think, Adam installed, 
uh, and Sublime Text and probably brackets. Um, maybe one of those is deleted on this machine, but I don't ever use them. Visual Studio Code is the editor that I tend to use. And without spending too much time, um, which it's hilarious right now that it's taking so long to load, which is because I have so many Google Chrome and Dev Firefox dev tabs open that it's like not even behaving with me. So that being said, Visual Studio Code is probably one of the most, uh, my I guess this is my favorite editor of choice at the moment. And I've been using this since early 2017. So there's been a lot of hype with VSC and almost all developers now I see. Back when I was in my boot camp, I actually was like the VSC evangelist. And everybody was using Atom because Atom was so much better for people than Sublime. Uh, and there was a lot of configurations and just nicer. And so I was trying to convince people and I actually convinced almost all of my instructors that I dealt with at the time, minus one, and many of the, the students in my cohort for the boot camp that I was a part of at Thinkful to actually adapt and use this editor. At the time, there was no integrated terminal within uh, Atom. There, was, there wasn't even a plugin yet for it. And so I loved the integrated terminal and I loved the debugger tools. Now we have a ton of extra tools, tons of individual packages, and the support for this, uh, this I like more leaning towards IDE text editor is incredible and what we will most likely be using a majority of the time. So that being said, if you have never written a piece of code, a line of code, just go ahead and download Visual Studio Code. And that's what I'm gonna be using as we dive into HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to start off the the road to developer. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful, resourceful. I will share all the links below. Uh, depending on what you're interested in, you may wanna also download additional IDEs or text editors, um, but this is hopefully going to be a very, very uh, good series that will help you get started and take away some of that nervousness by literally doing it from the very beginning. Again, thanks for watching.